hold your questions until the end because it's very loud and I won't hear you and you right, won't hear me right, and okay. we'll just be screaming at each other for nothing. Okay, so right. what we have here, um, this is our third grist mill to have been on site. So our first record of a grist mill was in 1744. It was part of a sale advertisement for this milling in Village before it was actually Walmford. Um, then we believe that one burned down in 1822 and a second grist mill was built in its place, and then that one burned down in 1872, and a third mill, the one we're standing in right now, was built in that one's place, okay? The first two had that big classic water wheel, like what you picture when you think of a grist mill. This one was a little more modern, and it actually had a turbine, which kind of looks like a water wheel flipped on its side, you know, horizontally. Like over and, there? Like yes, the that's actually the very turbine that ran this mill and it sat inside the building, right underneath, connected to this main shaft right here. Mm -hmm. And that's what operated everything in this entire building. And there's a lot of this building moving that you might not even realize is moving because inside a lot of these um, chutes like this, there are elevator systems which have uh, canvas belts with little cups and they carry things all the way up to the third floor and then once it gets to the third floor, everything has to go to the third floor. And then it can be dropped to wherever you need it throughout the building. Oh, they heard funny, did they? Sorry. They've got cross country at home, Dell, and the radio is very busy. Okay. Oh. So these slant shoots, anything you see slanted is dropping something down. And that's just gravity. There's nothing, you know, working for that. It's literally just dropping down. So I'm going to fill our hopper here with corn. Okay, now for most of Walmford's milling history, they would have been milling uh, wheat flour, uh, corn into cornmeal, barley, oats, oh, barley rye, barley. all kinds of things. Today we're milling corn into cornmeal because when the parks took over, um, or I'm sorry, when this mill closed down in 1917, that's what they were doing. This had become obsolete. They didn't need these local grist mills anymore um, because they had steam power and they had moved out west. They could process in the field, you know. So this this had kind of gone by the wayside. By 1917. By 1917. Oh. Yeah. So what they were doing is they were grinding corn for local livestock. And that's what we're representing today. So what I have in here is shelled corn. This is feed corn, field corn, dead corn, whatever you want to call it. It's very hard, okay? You probably break your teeth if you tried to chew it. It's not the sweet corn that we eat, okay? So it has to be processed in some way in order for it to be eaten by us or fed out to livestock, okay? So our corn kernels are in this box called hopper. Attached to this or under this hopper, the corn kernels funnel into this little wooden piece here called a shoe, okay? Inside of the stones, which are shaped like a donut, in the middle, there's a wooden piece, a rod, called a damsel. And on this damsel, there are little metal ridges, okay, little ridges attached to the outside. And as the damsel spins, those ridges are gonna hit the shoe, and the corn kernels are gonna get knocked down into the center of the stones. There's two sets. There's one on the bottom called the bedstone. I'm actually standing on a bedstone right now. And that's not gonna move, okay? That one just stays stationary. 
The one you see here is the runner stone. That one's going to rotate. Now, what you're seeing, that's actually concrete. You're not seeing the stones. The stones are harvested, per se, in sections. It's called burr stone, B-U-H-R. Okay, and it's harvested in sections, and it's held together by a metal band, a big circular metal band, and then concrete is poured over top to further hold it together. So what you're seeing here is that concrete that's holding the stones. Okay, so our top stone is spinning, the corn is being ground. How is it being ground? Well, the stones have been dressed. So you see here these um, grooves cut into the stones. Okay, a millwright would come and do that. And there's different patterns depending on what you're going to be grinding. So um, when you cut those grooves in, that's called dressing the stones. And ours are, of course, dressed for corn because that's what we're going to be milling. But there are a great many patterns that you could dress your stones with. Dressing here, these patterns help, but the stone itself is incredibly hard and porous. And by porous, you can see there's these little holes that have formed in the stone. Here, see all of them? Okay, and that's going to also help break apart those corn kernels. And what you really want is that starchy material in the middle. That's where the nutrition is. So, our corn kernels are being broken up, okay? And this is going to spin quite fast. It spins about 80 rotations per minute. Um, I actually, if you want to know the truth, put a piece of duct tape on it and count it. One, two, you know, and watch it go around to make sure I knew exactly what it was. And I was telling everybody, I like to be honest. <laughs> so about 80 rotations per minute, okay? And as these stones are spinning, the cornmeal is going to kind of fly out through those channels that have been cut. And it's going to end up out here in what's called the vat. Okay, and as the stones spin, that cornmeal is going to get pushed around until it falls down here. Okay, oh. and your best spot to see, you might be able to see from there, there's a little chute here and there's a hole cut out in the floor so you can see. And once this is working, you'll actually see cornmeal fall down. Okay, and the chute goes under the floor and gets picked up over here. Oh, wait for you to get here so I can explain it. <laughs> and it gets picked up here, and the, these are these belts and cups that I was talking about. I don't right. know if you can see, there's actually um, some cornmeal in there, okay? And that's going to carry all the way up to the third floor. Now, what is coming out of these stones is everything together. There's the good cornmeal that we want, and there's also um, middlings, which are very coarse. I would need to be ground again in the hopes of getting oh. the nice soft cornmeal that we want. And then there's the bran, which now we turn into bran muffins, but would have been fed out to livestock at the time, farm animals. So your cows, your pigs, um, sheep, goats, you know, chickens. Um, anywho, so it's going to go through a bolter or a sifter. And that looks like what's behind you right there. It's a hexagon reel. That's what that wooden contraption is, an oak mesh. Oh. That's for wheat because wheat is very fine, right? So it can fit through that. However, the cornmeal is a little bigger than that and it's not gonna fit through that silk at all. So upstairs on the third floor, we have a very similar piece of equipment except it has um, a wire mesh instead. Okay, and the wire mesh, see how that's all the same? It's just this one yeah. kind of silk. Yep. The wire mesh upstairs, is it's done in three sections. So there's one with very small holes that the fine stuff fits through. And then in the middle, it's a little bigger. And then in the end, that's where the brand comes through and the holes are very large. So in this barrel he actually made here, and you're welcome to touch it, it might be a little buggy just to warn you. So there's no surprises. <laughs> and when you touch it, just, you know, I would like you to think about whether it's something you would get out of a store or if it seems any different. Well, I buy oh, stone like ground. ground. Yeah. So if you buy the stone ground, that's probably similar. similar. Consistency, yeah. Yeah, but if you buy, like, I don't know, Martha White's, whatever. Too, it's very fine. It's yeah. probably very fine. Um, how did, how did corn, is it mixed with water then? No, actually, so when I'm done running the stones, I turned on this little system here so I can't walk too close to the railing, but when I'm done, um, I can put some bran on a scoop for you so you can see what that bran looks like. It's, um, it's cracked open enough so that 
like a cow or, you know, they've got more powerful jaws than we do. So while we wouldn't be able to chew it, they absolutely okay. can. Okay. So what you will see back here, okay, because it's gone through the bolter or the sifter, right? And there's that fine, the middlings, and then the brand. So this shoe, this is fine, middlings, and I have the brand closed because nothing really comes out of it. There's so oh. little. <laughs> Not much gets produced, but I have these open, so you should be able to see something falling out of these, okay? And then when I'm done, I'll put the three different varieties on a scoop so that you can see the difference, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and run it. Um, I'm going to run it for about two minutes. I do put a little timer on, and reason being it's for preservation, not production, so I try not to run it too long. You know, because I'm here to, I want to keep our stones safe. Of course. <laughs> of course. If that makes sense. It does. Yeah. Of course. Okay, so start. All right. Here. So, historically, of course, it ran off of the Crossbicks Creek. But as we mentioned, um, there's just not very much water out there anymore, is there? Mm -hmm. So, on the third floor, we have a hydraulic pump, which um, creates pressure that gets transferred down to a motor in the basement, which then I harness the power with this wheel, and that is what gets the stones going. Everything after that is running like it did many, many, many moons ago. All right? Just remember to hold questions, because you yeah. won't hear me. I'm not allowed to talk. So what that does, when I get the stones started, and I'm bringing them up to speed, I have um, this stone is raised. Because as they come up to speed, the top one wobbles, you know, it wobbles a little. Um, and then once it's gotten to the speed I'm going to run it at, then I lower the top stone onto the bottom. And then same thing, when I'm going to slow it down, I raise this stone back up, and it's so small, you can't see it, um, but, but if I do it right now, you might hear it. Let's see. Oh. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not the kind of thing you can really see, I don't think, but you can hear it. Yeah. And back up. Very subtle. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, of course, to preserve the stone, you know, so that we don't cause any damage. Now, I have 
Um, there were two things. See, I knew there were two things. <laughs> I have our stone set to run as far apart as possible. So this wheel is called a tentering wheel, okay? And it's part of a system where I can adjust the height, the running height, you know, not just me raising and lowering a little, but the actual height that I want this to run at. And when I adjust that height, I'm changing how coarse or fine the cornmeal is going to be. So I have our mill set to run so the cornmeal is as coarse as it could possibly be because the further apart I have my stones running, the better it is in terms of preservation because I don't want my stones to touch. If the stones touch, that can start a fire and it's going to cause excess wear and we might have to have someone come out and repair these and these are the original stones from that 1800s mill, so you don't want to do that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we want to no. protect these as much as we possibly can. Sure. So let me get a scoop so I can show you. How long did it take to grind? Is this full? I would call this full, yeah. So how um, long would that take to grind? Today, I've done two demonstrations and we're about to hear. Oh. So I could probably fill, I'm, Granted, I probably run the mill a little longer than I usually do, I would say. Um, it's nice when you have groups that are really interested and engaged because then you can, you, you have more to share. You right, know, where sometimes right. you get people who are like, eh, all right, they ran, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you judge the groups that come in. Sometimes you see a group and they see it turn on and they're like, all right, and then they leave. <laughs> so and then you just quick shut them off because you don't want to run them needlessly. And now there's barely any bran, but maybe I can scrape some up. I got a little. All right. This is the fine stuff. But remember, yeah. this could be much finer. I mean, it could be so fine, it's almost a powder. That's about here. And that's what's here. Yeah. Now, kind of. I mean, when I'm done with the scoop, I'm going to dump it in there and mix it in. But, but basically, this is what's in here. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's the middlings. You would grind that again. Okay. Um, I have had some people point out, I don't know how true this is, but that it reminds them of grits. Mm -hmm. So if you yeah, eat grits, mm -hmm. which I do, mm -hmm. it can no, <laughs> with enough butter and cheese, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you right. can make anything good. Um, yeah, yeah. So that might be closer, but I would say grits are kind of a mix of these two. I don't know. That's just yeah. how I feel. And then this is the brand. So that's, you said the nutrients, that's the heart of the... That, so this has most of the, the nutrients. Oh. This fine cornmeal, um, because the fine powdery material, that's the uh, starchy, nutritious part that's inside, okay? And then this probably has some more of that outer shell, right? And then this is like all outer shell. There's really nothing... That's just fiber then. That's just, just fiber, fiber, yeah. yeah. Yep, which we can't, that's just fiber for us, but for like a cow or um, a sheep or even a horse, but I hate to say horses because there's a big cleaning process that has to go through this because they can't, there's spores. Do you, are you a horse person? I don't know, you're shaking your head like you might know. <laughs> um, okay, so there, there's a spore. Yeah, you can take, I don't mind being in the picture. There. Um, so, you can feed it to the livestock and they have, um, especially the ruminants, they have a four compartment stomach. And that stomach is made so that they can digest things. I mean, they have gut bacteria and stuff that we do not have that will digest this for them. Um, like a horse has a cecum, which is a part of their digestive tract that has the bacteria, the gut bacteria, that will digest this so that they can eat, then eat it, which is how they can eat hay and grass. Like, we, we can't go out. I mean, I guess if you're really desperate, you could probably eat some grass. I don't think that would go well, though. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, so for us, that's just roughage. Like, that's not going to do any, you're not going to get any nutrients out of that. Whereas for those animals, they can extract the nutrients out of that. This is an antique, and it's got, it's a little messy, but it's got um, B-F-N. So that was probably the initials oh. of the person who made the scoop. <laughs> right? So that they knew it was theirs. Yeah. And they had to make that. 
There are shovels. I, it, I don't think you've gone, you went up to the second floor. There are shovels in a stall up there that also have a lot of these initials, like some of them on the handle, like it might be in a hidden spot, but they made them or they had them made for them, you know? So it's where just were so the, the people, the community here, where were, where was the cemetery where people were built if they lived here? So it wasn't the cemetery.